Hello everyone and welcome back to another video tutorial for Terran vs Zerg. Today I'll be showing you the 3 racks build uh, that is non-proxy, just in your base, but of course I'm going to be showing you on Frozen Temple because that's a fairly popular map for the 3 racks Reaper. It is a cheese, so if you're not the type to use a cheese, then look away now and go back to the other tutorial that I've already uploaded with the 211. As usual, you'll have the visual indication of the build as well as the audio indication of the build. So let's get started. As always, rally your first SCB to the front and start building your wall. Of course, your barracks, and right after that, go ahead and put down your gas geyser. In this video, I'll also be providing some tips and tricks, examples of the build's use in pro games, as well as its strengths and weaknesses. Put down your 17 barracks, this is where things start, start to get interesting. Put your guys on gas. And then at 19, build your third barracks. Twenty is your gas geyser, then your reaper. And then your depot. Build your orbital command, 21, send your guys to gas, and just start building as many reapers as possible. At this point, the build is kind of over, but of course you're going to know how to follow up with it. And I'll wait till after the build is done, really, to talk about its strengths and weaknesses. And make sure you have to get supply blocks. You actually have to run on your supply depot pretty quickly. Here, yeah, those are on 24 supply. And this is all about keeping your macro going while also keeping your micro going. So continue to attack with the Reapers wherever you can, whenever you can. At around 30 supply, go ahead and send an SCV down to the low ground. And then at about 31, you're going to make your command center. Now be careful of wings having bypassed your reapers. Ideally, they haven't. But if you ever feel uh, unsafe, then put your command center on the high ground. 33 depot, just not getting supply blocked. And then add a tech lab on one of your barracks at 35 supply that's going to be for your stim. At this point you are transitioning away from the cheese and hopefully I've done enough damage. Reactor on the rest of the barracks. Start stim. I'm a little bit late on it. Uh, get your factory around this time. So you're gonna go by times for the most part here because you're gonna assume that you've lost a couple of Reapers or whatnot. That's so uh, all around four minutes. Command center should be done by now. So build that into an orbital and transfer your SCVs so you got perfect saturation. Continue building marines out of your barracks. Build your third command center around this time. And 
There are multiple ways to follow up a three racks reaper, including a two base attack, but this is more of a macro oriented or uh, follow up. Reactor on your factory, and of course the starport. Keep building SCVs, keep building marines. And we are engineering bays around this time as well, and go ahead and finish that wall off. It's useful. Don't get supply blocked, as I am about to. I am bad at this game, it's true. Swap your factory with your starport, and uh, start your medevacs as soon as possible. Probably should have started them before the plus one. Either way, they come around the same time. Get your refineries, keep building SCVs, keep building marines, get your third set up. This is the point where you know how to macro and you should be doing it. Remember to add on additional facilities, production facilities, as you saturate your bases and just enjoy the macro game. Let's actually discuss the build. Let's take a look at the strengths and weaknesses of this build. First, looking at strengths. So, it can snowball very quickly, meaning that if you get lucky with your first couple of Reapers and they lose a Queen or they lose a lot of Lings, you could be in for an auto win, which can also happen occasionally. So if you're looking for shorter games most of the time for cheeses, clearly this is a very good cheese to use. A lot of Zerg players from Bronze to Masters don't know how to deal with this. I mean, Bronze to Flippin' Pro, right? Reapers can defend against er any early game counter. Now, this doesn't mean that you are guaranteed not to die, you can mess up like anyone else, but that they should be able to protect you against roaches moving across the map, ravagers, and speedlings. This can transition into a macro game, and usually does, in fact, if you do everything right. You get guaranteed scouting, so nothing should really surprise you. No surprise Roachmore, no surprise Lair, anything like that. And lastly, Reapers can be used with follow-up medevac push, to add a little bit DPS, and the grenades are actually very useful. And the weaknesses of this build, it is hard to micro, so it's recommended for advanced StarCraft 2 players. Not gonna actually put a league as a suggestion, just know that you're gonna need to micro and macro at the same time to really get the most out of this build. Losing Reapers can result in a loss, the same way that it can snowball towards the Zerg, it can snowball back onto you, so make sure not to lose any Reapers or try your best not to. It needs to do damage in one form or the other, so that might mean direct drone losses, but it also might mean that you've produced enough, they've had to produce enough units that they don't have enough drones anyway. This is map dependent, so usually only on one or two maps per map pool. And last, Ravagers can outrange Reapers. So keep that in mind, when they get a good Ravager count and you've lost a couple of Reapers here and there, you might start dying, so be careful when that happens. The suggested maps, if this isn't clear, if you don't watch a lot of StarCraft Pro games, uh, definitely Frozen Temple and Galactic Process. Occasionally you might see this on other maps, including Frost recently, but it's pretty rare to see that. The highlight of these maps is that they're short, and that there's a lot of ledge to use for your Reapers. Tips and tricks. Just talked about this one in particular. Ravagers outrange Reapers. Once there's three or more, it's probably better to keep your Reapers out of combat. They're going to start getting sniped. Use ramps to your advantage. That is to say, go up, go down, go up, go down, and use the grenades on the ramps because they're going to clump the Zerg units and you're going to get the maximum amount of damage possible when you do that. Drone kills are good, but getting anything other than drones out of their larva is also very good. Don't dive for a mineral line, and you can keep them pumping non-drones anyway. So just keep up the aggression, and you're going to get more out of the attempted dive that might lose you all the Reapers anyway. This is a cheese, but you're going to have a good macro game too. Keep your Reapers alive, deny the third base, and use them with your medevac push, and you might just be able to win the game after the five minute mark. Of course, this is going to be where we see the links. Bam, bam, bam. There you go. Those are used by Euthermal, Beyond, Kelizer. A lot of Terran pros use this because it's a good cheese to know.